Though lucky to be alive today, the 20-year-old Maiko Otieno has lived on the bitter side of life after losing his entire family, their material possessions, and having to manage a life-threatening health condition. Despite the excruciating pain he experiences in times of crisis, hope has kept him going, and this is his story. Kiambu County, Kikuyu Sub-County, in Getaro Village, we meet Michael Otieno. He was born with sickle cell, a condition that has taken away his zeal for a 20-year-old. This morning, he was recovering from a crisis which left him with a lot of pain on his hip joint. Michael had to inject himself a painkiller, a procedure he has mastered just like a trained medic. Being the last born, Michael was a doll to his siblings and a special gift to his parents. I came from a family of five. My mom working in a city hall. Dad was a policeman. So me, my life was just good. I was being loved by parents the way mother loves their children. And my life was good, but sometimes I got sick. Life was blissful and managing sickle cell was a downhill task to the family. 28th August 2015 is a day Michael will live to remember. It was just a normal day. So my mom called my this, he, her sister and she told him that we were coming. So what, what, what when, you, when they got ready, including me. So there's this this is called sickle cell. Sickle cell crisis, it can shake joints painfully. It can be quite stiff. So I can never tremble. I can never suffer because of the medicines. And I never go to school. I never go to school. I never pump sick. So she decided that I'm being left behind by an nurse, so I could be treated. The family bid Michael farewell and set on a journey. He was part of the trip via video call until moments later when he fell asleep. I woke up and I go I went direct to my phone to check on my mom. So uh, while, while I was going direct to my phone, the phone was saying video lost and there were no, there was no signal. So I wondered what happened. Maybe I thought that they reached or they will call me. After that, 10 minutes later, my aunt called. It was on 3 p.m. She said, why are we liars? We are not liars. And see, my mom and my siblings are coming. They have not yet reached. I don't know. Maybe we give them time. Maybe if they have slept in a hotel, in a hotel, maybe they will come in the morning. So we decided to sleep. We slept very good. Uh, the, the next day we waited on them, but there was no luck, there was no sign of them. So the next other day they decided to go looking for the, to the hospitals, but we didn't find them. After that, the other day we decided to go look at mortuaries. And fortunately, unfortunately, we found them, all of them dead. After some investigations to accredit relatives to the deceased, a post-mortem was done to ascertain the cause of death. The post-mortem said that my mom had an asthma attack while she was driving because she, was, uh, she had asthma. After that, my relatives decided to come, prepare for the burial, and they came, for, they came on Wednesday, prepare for the burial, and the friends of my mom, Waka, Waka and her, they prepared and it went successful. So the day we, we were going to, to lay them to rest, uh, 
they took all of our things they took all of our things of my mom my clothes my siblings clothes in mine too me i didn't have any property belong to my parents i was just hearing this one take this this one take this this one take this go with this losing his entire family and everything entitled to them was traumatic and michael didn't know where to go after the funeral there's someone said this child is, needs to go to children's home but my aunt refused she said no the child is going with me and where the things of her of his mother will be so they argued for some time but they came to a conclusion that we should go with my aunt so we went into we went to narok for the first year first few months they treated me well i can't complain second year they treated me well but i was not going to school i was in grade 7 one day i had a sickle cell crisis attack so i was i was admitted at narok county referral hospital my blood went down because of stress i had stress how will my new life be my things of my mom, my mother the phones the properties i've not even seen a single one i just see their relatives they are the her sisters enjoying me but i don't have even one of anything to remember my mom i was admitted for at most 6.6 to 1 year but they were coming to visit me once in a while they were bringing me food at least they were cooperating to come and see me so i got discharged the the hospital waived me so i decided to go to go back to with my aunt at home life had taken a different tangent and michael could feel the unspoken gesture of being unwanted so they were giving me one one cup one spoon one plate that cup is the one i will drink porridge I drink any drink. Suffered, I didn't go to school and while I got school as got sponsor through uh, there's this church called St Peter's Catholic and there's this uh, group called St St Joseph St SVP St Joseph de Paul uh, St Vincent de Paul. So they decided to take me to school i finished my primary in class 8 i went back and finished my primary and luckily i got 395 marks and i thank god after that i enrolled at form 1 secondary in school there's this school called royal vision high school and i went there for some form 1 but i didn't when i didn't go for full year without being healthy I was just skipping because of the illness and because, and I was waking up early and sickle cell doesn't have doesn't want cold you just need to go to school while there is warm because my disease and cold doesn't go doesn't go each other so most of the time I was being admitted but I thank god I reached form 2 when I reached form 2 I didn't continue again till now there's this day i my aunt decided to send me in rural areas to sit with my grandmother mother to my mom so i went there and i suffered a lot i suffered because i remember my grandmom taking me to hospital with a wheelbarrow they gave me a lot of panadol and that panadol i that panadol it made my kidney to rot because i took many panadol because they were giving me panadol daily panadol fluids in iv and they they, they discovered my kidney started to act because nilianza kufura i started swelling up the body while i was starting they decided to check the in one of the kidneys they diagnosed it doesn't work anymore The news of his kidney broke his heart, wondering what had been left to the other kidney. Two months lapsed while Michael was still in hospital and his uncle decided to visit him at the hospital. 
when when my uncle came to the hospital i said uncle please you have the things of my mom why are you making me suffering like this so he got stressed he was wondering where should go where should go so after there they he came and got out from me the hospital we went back to rural areas and him he went back to narok without me so after that my uncle went went quiet thinking and there's a day decided to tell that friend of my grandmom to give me money so I could travel tomorrow morning. So I, uh, I went and I lighted at Narok, went to my aunt, uh, went to my aunt place, but I found my uncles was very sick and they didn't welcome me very good. They said, why have I come? Say my con it's it's very bad to come. Me I got sick at at home. I took myself from the hospital while I was walking with my knees because the the cousin, the my cousin Sasa, the daughter to my aunt, told me she's tired and I should not disturb her. So I decided to walk with my knees until to the road and it I remember it was three o'clock. So after there the motorist vehicle appeared approached me. They said to her, what am I doing in this late of the night? Late of the hour and I said I'm sick. I have sickle cell anemia. Please help me to go back to go to hospital. And, and you know, they felt for me sympathy. They alerted me in. They took me from to Narok County Referral Hospital. I was being managed, I was being injected the, the medicine of pain, and I was being admitted. But after they were being admitted, after two weeks later, I heard that my uncle passed away. His uncle's demise left Michael between a rock and a hard place as all fingers were pointed at him. They decided to approach me in the hospital. They came and started complaining that it is me and my God that has caused her, her husband to die. So after that, they argued with me there sometime, but the doctor chased them away. Told them, please, wait Michael to heal, set your family issues at the home, and now is our patient. So my uncle took me. Go and visit your cousins. So the daughter to my aunt. Because it says he held grudge against them. But we understand as what what is the problem with me, with her. So, Kati, I went, we talked. When it reached 12 o'clock, she chased me away. So I, I asked her, how, how should I go back to a ruin at this time? Except she doesn't want to know, but she does, she wants me out. So me, I accepted her will in Katoka, when I was in my own, on my way on the streets, 12, and I found myself nearly zone out Kitambo because of the cold stress. I was after I got no more. They were according to the doctors, so Kati saw nearly zone out. According to the doctors, Narok County wakakuja wakanichukua. After Narok County kunichukua wakani transfer Kenyatta sasa. In a totally unfamiliar hospital with none of his relatives near him, how did Michael pull through his stay at the hospital and at what point was he discharged from the hospital? His story continues after this short break.
familynews.today provides an escape room from the clutter through our podcasts from church escapades we get disappointed with God and I think it's a it's a misplaced anger to daily devotionals the beauty about God's love is that it was focused on all that God had to financial and life tips bedtime stories for your child all these and much more available just for you on familynews.today on Spotify Google Podcast and SoundCloud insight at your fingertips. Michael has been walking through the valley of the shadow of death, and he strongly believes that God's love has been seeing him through every passing day. Michael was at the Kenyatta National Hospital for two years. He says life wasn't a walk in the park. My stay at Kenyatta was very, very, very bad. I was crying vigorously. I said, my God, why? Why God am I suffering? Why am I suffering? What, what did I do? I said, Father, I said, I said, why are you crying? I said, I just want to be alone. I just want to be alone. I said, I just want to be alone. So there's this patient who had cancers, my friends. So they approached me. Can you say, young boy, what, what do you want? What are you crying? Are you in pain? Can you please ask me, please? I said, how will you be helped? Can you please leave me alone? Mind your own business. I'm, me, I'm tired. Even if you're tired, at ways you talk up a bit about what's wrong with you. So I decided to tell them I saved. First, I don't and I don't have diapers. So the diapers that I have is kind of a field and it's irritating me. So Nikona me pedagana kando, they negotiate. Then they went second floor Kenyatta. They bought diapers and then they came. So wakani bandilisha. Because joins. crisis, the bones in a stiff. His condition was deteriorating and his limbs becoming rigid at the joints. I was in a wheelchair with those patients. At least in a tembezu around and a second floor because you were allowed to walk. The loneliness, the pain, and lack of love threw Michael into a well of despair, and he contemplated the worst. There's this day here, I went to the balcony, on the second floor. So me, that day, I decided to throw myself. I decided today I must go and die. I'm tired. So I went to the second floor, seated my, me alone, and I think I went with crutches. God, why am I suffering like this? What Just show me the purpose of life and the meaning of love. So I was, as I was in my way to conclude, to throw myself, Father appeared. So Father appeared and I think he noticed what I was gonna do. Michael, Michael, what were you about to do? Why am I suffering like this, Father? Please tell me, I just want to follow my parents. And I started crying, saying, Maki, Mom and Dad, Mumelala, Sana, Mkeni, Mime, Choka. I'm tired. I'm tired, I'm tired. 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 I'm so father kangana kanishika na nguvu akanipeleka kwa ofisi yake akanifunga ndio ni calm down. Nikamwambia hata ukinifunga ukifungua hapa mimi naenda kujua hivyo ndio nimeamua. Lakini hiyo siku akuniacha na kaniita nasi akanishika akanipeleka hold akanifungia hapo paka nitolee. After that akaongelesha nkonga akasema basi sikonye mtampia discharge mtaniambi so we got poor discharge on October. So we'll go on answer process from October 
to November December G because I was nilikuwa waved nilikuwa na waviewa ju sikuwa na bill wa kulikuwa na mtoko ndipia bill so ukiwa process ya ku wave wengi wana waviewa na it takes a process nilikuwa nimedischargeo October so nikakuja nikatoka hospital December but having stayed at KNH for two years where did Michael go upon his discharge so there's this social workers they catered for my clothes and I was taken by an ambulance not I was not given any fare I was taken by an ambulance first to the Naro County referral and, and they were going to say that this is your patient Akosawa to Rudisha Akasema now where will you take him Uncle Yake amesema tumpeleke so after there tukapita tukatoka na Rock County referral tukaenda Wasunyiro and Wasunyiro ni uko njia kwenda Mara Masai Mara so tukaenda tukafika tukapata the wife to my uncle that wife mwenye pindangi watu wa uncle yango akatukaribisha vizuri and I, for the first time niliona ako na sympathy kwangu because I, my body had faded away even I didn't have any strength I was nikona shikiliwa because I was not eating I was sick siko natembea kwa atembea na crutches at crutches ni yangu niko na crutches karibu nne almost the same time his story was carried in one of the local tv stations and your Kenyans decided to act wakakuja wengi wengi walikuja kuniona lakini wako nipata ako ni pata na akasema tunaweza mtrace na namba so after there there is this group and you are coming to Kenya kwenda kuona Kinyata wakambia yeye na yuko Michael ayuko ako na rock so aka trace hadi na rock akanipata so walikuwa na nibai wakanibaiya kwa ngo ya Christmas including that jacket walikuwa nanifanyia shopping ya chakula one day his uncle asked Michael to visit his auntie in Narok. The aunt, the sister to my mom, akanikaribisha tu vizuri. So after that kunikaribisha vizuri but her daughter she didn't. She was wondering what I was doing there. So ikafika tukakaa nao vizuri ikafika till the late night hours the same day. The same day. Nikagonje I got ill. Na aunt alikuwa analala kwa nyumba yake huko. Wanya kwa lalala with her husband, that husband. So na sisi tulikuwa tunalala yetu. Nikamwambia mercy please I'm in pain. Please take to me to the hospital. Nakasema ye she is tired and I should go. So kwanza hapo vile niliadmitiwa nikapelekwa nikakaa hapo jan ilikuwa sasa February nikakaa hapo March nikakaa hapo April April lakini nikafikisha huko nusu nusu the hope of a better situation was slowly fading away but an angel in disguise reached out to Michael a call that saw him smile again so wakati alipiga kaniuliza where are you that time nilikuwa nimegonjeka tena so akadis akaseta plan kukuja kuniona so when they came with the her first her first daughter her first born daughter akakuja akanipata in a very bad state so akanionea huruma akakuja akakuja kani start catering for me breakfast lunch supper akakuwa close na mimi akasema she would like to be my mom nikasema god thank you at least sasa nimepata love and at least sai na jo meaning ya maisha not all the things is about money so after hapo umjua nikakuja daktari akasema yeah we need to give you discharge because tukikupea discharge unafaa kutoka because ukika hapa your immunity inaendelea ku kwenda chini nikienda chini unajua may something bad might happen so nikakuwa na stress nikaanza kuambia yule mom guy mom the doctor has, has, has tell me that wanataka kunipia discharge 
and I don't know sincerely I don't know where to go because hata nikaenda kwa mkodi tarudi hapa nikaenda kwa antini tarudi tu hapo hospitali 15th April 2023 Michael was discharged from the hospital and for the first time he was let in by a total stranger a person who found him in the hospital kind mom she took me in and we stayed peacefully but i was kind of sick kidogo i was kind of sick since april pakasai they no see a word lakini i'm um, just help me mom the my mom mama nisaidia nobody in kenya namjua so anajua tu my corona kana fosta mom she is laying low but because she knows who will truly bless him it's god Michael is grateful to his new family that has shown him love, given him a place to lay his head and a conducive environment for his recovery. However, Michael still needs to raise funds for two surgeries, one to remove his dysfunctional kidney and to correct his hip joint. So si juu kai naenda kukatwa or itafixwa hip replacement because of the sickness. Si kuvunjika hata ukiona nikiamka hapa imefura sati nilivunjika ni ugonjwa and that 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 this that this is called is called vascular necrosis of the hip of the hip joint because of the sickle cell it block nutrients za mfupa kufika huko so the for your head of femur you see here this one is called head of femur it helps person anakanyaga hivi inaimu ngo inapata nguvu dukanyage ingine so miangu hii haina nguvu iko imepasuka ime iko katikati after michael lost everything he was attached to he strongly believes in this one thing that keeps him afloat love 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 it's love i need and i urged kenyans please love orphans and widows even as to we are human beings it's not that we did something wrong so our parents could die no 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 even as we are human beings and even the bible says clearly the one who the true the true religion is the one who each caters for widows and orphans and me i always tell people because while i was kinyata I remember I read Bible and I came to understand the meaning of the word of God and the reason of love. Even God akifanya like he, God has made you met with somebody like this even if it's a vulnerable. He wants you to help that person. Don't just throw your face away. You see that no, I don't have and you know very clearly that you have so I had to can you say really need love na nikamwambia faithfully i really need love but remember if you choose to support please support with love let love guide you at a very young age michael has been through a lot and he values every opportunity he gets to make a difference not only in his life but also to those near him please let us know the meaning of love and those who have their parents alive please nature them love them me i wish my mama kikuwa hapa even akifufuka i could not run I'll run because i need that parental love nimeteseka and i said one thing i'll fight for the orphans any orphan like me say the way i'm big and i have suffered like this how many people orphans there when you go to gongo and ateseka they really need love through love He has managed to maintain a healthy perspective to life. At the end of the interview, we asked Michael about following up with his family's compensation. No, 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 even I don't need compensation. I need compensation of love. Mm, the property, I can't I can't find the property which I don't know uh, the way my parents acquired. I told God that um, if it is the property i want him to give me my own property and i just needed compensation of love 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 and protection and assistance because when you love somebody you'll always pray for her or him and when you pray for her for or him you'll always decide to help that person shortly after the interview 
Michael got into another crisis and he had to take another jab of a painkiller and a deep rest. We send Michael more love because truly, he is precious in God's eye. If you have a story you'd like to share with us, kindly text us on 20316 or WhatsApp on 0786-316-316 and we will get back to you.